Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 79 of my poker vlog. The last weekend of poker that I played had a bunch of interesting hands, but before I get into them, I am currently top of the Rad Poker leaderboard, and they are giving away a World Series of Poker contract. The first contract will be given in the next month or so, so hopefully I can hang on, but whatever happens, we can't let that guy win, but let's get right into some hands. First interesting hand. With one limp to me, I'm in middle position with ace 10 of clubs. I raise to $30. Well, two late position players call and the limper calls as well. So we are going four ways to a flop of ace, king, seven, one club, two hearts. I'm definitely going to bet this board. If I'm ever going to have a C betting range, it definitely includes top pair good kickers. So going to bet this board 100% of the time. Well, Strangely enough, the early position player leads into me for $40. Off a really short stack too, kind of odd, as I don't really expect this opponent to ever do this with a set of sevens or a random ace. I'm pretty confident that he's limited himself to just a heart draw that he's trying to name his own price for, to which we will never let happen. I raise to $110. I believe I can get value from the heart draw. I believe I can disincentivize the people behind to continue with any amount of equity they have. And additionally, I really want to get in against this opponent's short stack on pretty much any non-heart turn. So after a bit of thinking, my opponent eventually calls. The turn is the six of clubs. So if I happen to be against a flopped set or flopped two pair, I gained a lot of outs with that card. When my opponent checks to me as he has under $200 behind there's really no other bet size to go with here than all in when i put my opponent all in he folds very quickly i think his lead to try to name his own price with the hearts did not work out for him next interesting hand with one limb to me i'm on the button with king queen of hearts I raise it to $30. One of the blinds calls and the limper calls as well. So we are going three ways to a flop of ace, 10, six, two hearts. This is an absolutely phenomenal board for me. Flopping a gut shot and the nut flush draw feels pretty good. It's definitely the kind of flops you hope for with this exact hand. Uh, strangely enough, the late position player leads into me for $20. I guess this is the day of leading into pre-flop aggressors, but I'm not going to let this go to the turn for just $20. I raise to 60. I do this as a semi-bluff, not really trying to get value from anything, but really trying to build the pot in case one of my cards hit and also to retain the betting lead as i can two barrel with any eight nine heart jack queen or king card that comes on the turn all of which would improve my equity even more so definitely want to have the betting lead and play a bigger pot with this exact hand well my opponent jams for about under 250 and we're never folding this hand here so we call after a bunch of red cards that do not improve our hand my disappointment is immeasurable. We show, and my opponent has a six. Apparently, the micro lead into the preflop aggressor is strong for this particular person. Interesting. Next interesting hand. With two limbs to me, I'm in the cutoff with ace-queen offsuit. I raise to $35. The button calls and the two limpers calls as well. So we're going four ways to a flop of queen five four rainbow. Flopping top top on a super dry board is pretty much the bottom of the range of hands I'm gonna bet into multiple opponents. I bet $80. Well, two different early position players decide to call this one. So we're definitely growing a pretty decent sized pot here. When this turns the ace of diamonds, I guess two three gets there, but no one should really be calling a $35 raise with that. So we can pretty much discount it. When both players check to me a second time, I'm definitely going to keep betting as I think that if my opponents somehow had ace five, ace four, they're going to pay me off with an entire stack. If they somehow had ace three, ace deuce, and we're calling with gut shots, they made top pair. And top two pair is just too strong not to bet a second time. So I bet $225. And for this bet, both opponents eventually fold. All right, 
next hand of note. With one limp, a middle position player raises to $25. And this particular opponent is someone who I've seen play literally any two cards, never fold a hand all day, no matter what. So when we're in position and we have an ace, we have to mix in some three bed bluffs against this particular opponent as his range is infinite and we would like to play bigger pots against this person when we're in position. So I raise to $85. Unfortunately, the limper calls and the middle position loose aggressive player decides to call as well. Well, when the flop is 10-6-5, rainbow, obviously we don't flop any piece of it at all. This is a board that I believe should favor a three bears range over a raise callers range as I can still have aces, kings, queens, ace, kings suited with a backdoor, flush draws, and sometimes jacks and tens, where I believe my opponent's more weighted towards suited Broadway cards, maybe some weaker aces, but all of these hands should have actually missed this board anyway, so ace high could be good here a decent percentage of the time. We're gonna proceed with this hand the way we'd play our entire range, and we are gonna down bet I bet $60. Thinking that's going to take me multiple bets to take this one down against someone who will call with pretty much any two cards. I would like to bet here to retain the betting lead to be able to decide if I want to continue this bluff on later streets with cards that should favor my range over my opponents. Well, only the loose aggressive player calls. And when the turn is the king of spades and my opponent checks to me, I think this is a good card to continue this bluff story. As with the previous hand, if I'm going to bet with ace queen when I make top two pair, I should bet on this king. If I had ace, king, pocket aces, pocket kings, maybe a suited king 10 or king queen, to balance my value, I also have to bet sometimes when I don't have it. And to the size of $225 my opponent fold last time. So this time we're gonna make it 250, size up just a smidge, hopefully give him that extra incentive to let it go. Well, that does not work out for me. My opponent goes all in. This is really not the situation you want when you bluff multiple streets is to face an all in from your opponent. But my opponent goes all in for $268 and um, for 18, I think that I'm priced in. Theoretically, my ace could be live a good portion of the time. Wow, how did I river that card? I probably don't deserve that, but it turns out I didn't actually need it because my opponent had jack nine of spades. Really not my favorite hand to go over. Don't think I played it well at all, but sometimes bluffs just go right. So next interesting hand. With two limps to me, this time I'm gonna size up to $40 as these opponents are not folding for anything. So when I have a premium like Ace, Jack of Spades, we're definitely going to make these opponents pay to play. Well, like the usual scenario, three different people call. So we're going four ways to a flop of nine, three deuce, two spades. This is a fantastic board for me, not only because I flopped the nut spade draw, but also because really no one should have anything. This board is likely to miss all of my opponents and Ace High should be good. So I bet $100 little over half pot hopefully just take it down right now however the super loose aggressive opponent who in this hand is on the button chooses to make the call when it turns the eight of diamonds it's not a particularly good one i would two barrel with any card over nine because theoretically i don't see my opponent have anything except a pair of nines and for this particular opponent I don't think he'll fold a nine for all of the money in the world. So semi-disappointed that I didn't at least get an overcard to slightly increase my odds of getting a second barrel through. I check it to my opponent and he bets $100. All right, at this point, I'm extremely confident he has just a nine. I'm not sure my spades will get me paid at the river, but we will definitely lead into them if one of my spades hit. Huh. River's the ace of diamonds. So somehow we river top pair good kicker. And against this opponent, who we are nearly certain has simply a nine, we are not going to give him the chance to just check this one back. We are going to lead into him. We would play this exact line with pocket deuces, pocket threes, four five of spades, four five of any suit, and the bottom of it being ace with a good kicker. So we lead into this opponent for $300. And after a smidge of hemming and hawing and hollywooding, he eventually goes all in. I mean, I guess he flopped a set of nines, maybe eight, nine, because the consistent sizing on the turn leads me to believe that he was strong enough that he wanted me to continue with whatever equity I had in the hand in it all the way to the river. So when he raises all in, I fold. And my opponent has ace nine, 
off suit. Didn't like that one. Didn't like it at all, especially because this is the only hand that I lead fold with. If I had four or five, I call. If I flopped a set, I call. It's just, I really don't mind the lead fold line on this particular board because I'm definitely calling it river bet anyway when that ace hits. Maybe it's less than $300, maybe it's more. I'm not so certain. Because I'm calling anyway, I like taking away my opponent's ability to check behind with his weak hands and put him in a difficult spot to call off a decent sized bet. Let me know what you think about this hand in the comments below. So next hand of note. I am under the gun with ace king off suit. I raised to $30. Under the gun plus one calls. The opponent from the last hand is in the small blind. Calls as well. When the flop is ace king four, I'm definitely gonna go for a down bet. Similar to how we play with that ace nine hand when we have nothing and we down bet, we're gonna down bet when we have the entire board locked up. For this hand, we start out with a $25 wager. Well, an early position player calls and the loose aggressive opponent calls this $25 bet. So we are still three ways to a turn card, which is the three of spades. Now in this card, my loose aggressive opponent decides to lead into me for $50. I mean, this three completes five deuce, but how often could he ever have that? I think this opponent's more likely to have like ace three, ace four, maybe three, four. Plenty of viable two pair combinations just got there that he would bet this way. Because there's no actual draw that he would lead bluff with, I'm gonna proceed this street with just a call and reevaluate River. When the river's the nine of diamonds, as no additional hand could have got there, and theoretically my opponent could also have ace nine like he has before but my opponent bets 150 dollars into me now here's the part where as nothing's changed from the turn to the river and my opponent seemed to like the three i think it's definitely possible my opponent could have had ace three or three four two very viable two pair combinations i think he could have been turning five six into a bluff on this river card but i think it's equally possible that turned a set of threes or actually made a straight with five deuce seemed to physically light up a little bit when that three hit either way i think top two pair is just way too strong to just call it's not too often you get top two pair hoping my opponent will actually three bet jam me on this raise i make it 400 dollars. value betting my top two pair hoping my opponent can call with ace three maybe even jam into me with ace three a lot of theatrics by my opponent he kind of sigh goes all in the old sigh i don't know what to do all in usually pretty strong usually pretty nutted i was never gonna fold this hand to a raise by this particular opponent and somehow when he announced all in i just instinctively snap folded face up and i guess showing respect to my fold my opponent shows five deuce off suit Ugh, that one stings that one stings value owned myself to the max against this guy twice down here salt is a way of life obviously the environment down here is all salt the, the ceiling's salt the floor is salt the walls are salt But that's okay, we have ace jack suited again, and we're in early position this time. We are gonna raise to $25. These opponents are calling with anything, so instead of pushing the action, we're just gonna try to control the pot a little bit. Only continue when we make really strong hands. Well, a late position player calls, and the loose aggressive player calls as well. Haven't seen him fold in five hours. Well, the flop is ace jack four, two hearts flopping top two pair we're definitely gonna bet on the larger side now we want to charge the heart draws to continue and there's actually some wheel straight draws that we can get value from anyway as well as ace king ace queen any ace really so we're gonna bet 50 dollars. only the later position player calls so we're going heads up to a turn card which is the king of hearts pretty disastrous card for me pretty astronomically bad not only because the obvious hearts get there but also ace king which i was beating also gets there so on this card i'm definitely gonna check it to my opponent and my opponent bets 100 dollars. i've seen this guy bet 100 dollars with fifth pair on the board before so i don't necessarily give him all the credit of having the best hand yet especially because the only rational hearts that get there are queen 10 for an actual royal and otherwise he'd have to be playing mid to very low suited connectors so 
and he could easily take this line with ace queen ace 10 with one heart so definitely gonna call this street when the river is the four of spades i checked my opponent again and he bets exactly 100 dollars again i don't know on this one maybe this is an easy fold as i'm not beating a whole lot i don't know for a hundred dollars i felt pot committed and my opponent had seven four of hearts i couldn't even beat the trip fours that he rivered or the hearts and yeah these these opponents are playing very very bad hands and they keep coming through for them they they, they keep getting there with these these less than optimal hands they're playing all right a final hand of note with one limb to me i'm on the cutoff with queen jack of clubs the button and the limper call so we're going three ways to a flop of 10 9 3 two spades one club when both players check to me i'm gonna go two-thirds pot this time flopping an open ender and a backdoor flush draw with two overs is definitely very strong my exact hand here should be good by the river a majority of the time and when both my opponents checked me, they really shouldn't have too much, either one of them. Well, an early position player counts out the 85, and then counts out 150, and then 200, and then very, very slowly, then 250, and then eventually makes it 285, which I don't even understand. I don't know what you would do three and a half times my, my raise here with. Both hands like ace-10, maybe ace-x of spades maybe nine ten maybe a set of tens or nines might play this exact same way as we still have eight nut outs some pair outs and some backdoor flush possibilities we're definitely not going to fold this to just one raise so we make the call the turn is the literal worst card in the deck for my exact hand hate 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 double hate Loathe entirely. That one, and then the 10 of diamonds would also be equally as bad. Somehow if my opponent had top, top, ace, 10, he made trips and he's super happy to continue. Somehow if my opponent flopped a set, I'm actually drawing dead. If my opponent had, for some reason, ace, nine and turned it into a bluff, he may feel happier to continue as it makes it less likely I have a 10. If he's just bluffing with seven, eight, he may feel very happy to continue as it's less likely I could have a 10. I'm not so certain, but when my opponent goes all in pretty quickly, I really can't call this just because I'm not even drawing to the nuts anymore. I could theoretically be drawing dead. Maybe I don't need to call the, the flop raise. I think I definitely need to bet the flop almost always with my exact hand. Maybe size it down a little bit so I can easily call a raise if it comes to that, but either way, with, with this turn card, we're forced to fold and lose another one in a row not good so yeah the results of the weekend not how we wanted to start this ten thousand dollar challenge we are down 2192 across eight hours which equates to 274 dollars an hour or 55 big blinds an hour on that note today we start the twelve thousand dollar challenge but stay tuned because we will have more hands to go over next week